Our recovery in agriculture, improved manufacturing sector and increased tourist arrivals are projected to be the key drivers of Kenya's economy in 2018. There's going to be a focus on boosting manufacturing, on trying to reinvigorate certain sectors of the economy. If the outlook for tourism is, is going to be favorable with the establishment of direct flights from the US to Nairobi, there are sources of positive economic shocks. However, economists and Standard Chartered Bank believe that increasing fuel prices and other global risks are expected to limit Kenya's gross domestic product expansion to 4.6%. The sustained achievement of 6 to 7% growth will get Kenya to where it wants to be economically. And what we should be watching near term is not where that GDP growth number is. Last month, last year, it almost doesn't matter. What matters right now are the reforms put in place by Kenya to ensure sustained growth in the future. Razia believes that the economy is yet to fully recover from the effects of the 2017 general elections and the drought experience that have impacted on investments. Seeing NPLs in the economy picking up, as activity declined, seeing this period of extended weakness around the elections, it's just the usual political cycle, uncertainty means a dampening down of activity. And over that time, the obvious thing for banks to do was to invest any surplus in government securities. Economists have called for fiscal consolidation so as to reduce uncertainty over rising public debt servicing that the economists believe could widen the risk for Kenya. If you take out debt service costs and you just look at the difference between revenue and spending, what Kenya needs to be able to pledge for a proper consolidation is that it's going to be spending a lot more than it's earning in revenue. It either does this by cutting spending, but that net may not be sufficiently growth friendly, or it finds ways to grow revenue in a way that doesn't harm growth. Razia projects that the risk of inflation is likely to spike in the second half of this year to the government's upper medium target of 7.5%, fueled by high fuel prices.